Packers and the Patriots sitting along with six Super Bowls. So let's put this six Super Bowls in perspective, uh, especially with the Brady and the Belichick era, nine Super Bowls in total for them. Uh, how, hands down, the greatest dynasty in in football, correct? In football. Okay. In football. I, I wasn't born... You know, in the Packers days and that those runs and all that, I, I have no recollection of that. But for what I know, can't be touched. Mm -hmm. You can't even fathom this. You can't even you can't even find 53 guys, but in New England to buy into this type of atmosphere. Mm -hmm. You see, when 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 anybody come up here, they sound the same. They talk the same. They answer the same. They respond the same. They go out there and compete the same. It's all about the team, not about the eye. And the special thing about it, Prime, is the, the longevity of it. Yes. You know, you expanding 19 years or so, 18, 19 well, years. Well, their first championship yeah. with Brady and Belichick 2001. was 2001. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I heard someone explain the Patriots that I thought was so profound. And I don't know if you heard it, Prime. They said the Patriots are like chameleons. They can change based on their environment. Right. And that's what they have done over these 18 years, right? You know, if they needed to spread people out with Randy Moss and, and, and well you know, said. receivers, they can do that and win. Mm -hmm. If they need to have two tight ends with Grunk and, and the late uh, Aaron Hernandez, they can play like that as well. Now we see them fullback, two tights, running the football. It's, it's amazing. And you mentioned the longevity. Um, Brady was 24 years old when he won his first Super Bowl. Now he's 41. 2001 beats the Rams. 2000, and now 19, but the 2018 season beats the Rams again. The ability to do it year after year after year. Have we ever seen anyone like him? Now, we, Not just we in had, football. We had, but you got to understand, we've never seen any management that is truly and totally dedicated to winning and on the same page with the head coach. We've never seen that. Okay, so usually, right. usually the owner's doing this, the head coach want to do this, and there's friction. None of that. Okay, so but when you yeah, not, about, uh, Well, can I say this? I'm sorry to cut you off. Cool person. But you're right. Not in football, but the only thing to me that's maybe equivalent is the Celtics with Bill Russell and, and Ray Auerbach. Mm -hmm. I think I believe yeah, I'm pronouncing his last name. They didn't have that many teams they was beating though. Well, but <laughs> but, my <laughs> point, <laughs> so, but my point is, you know, even Bill transitioned true. to be a coach, true. you know, and they still won championships. Okay, so we'll take it outside of football since you bring up the Celtics. Is this the greatest dynasty in sports for you? Ooh, I know no, what Dion's going to say. That's top. I, MJ. You know, when when you win, what is the 11 championships? MJ. MJ ain't He's lose. MJ, over there. MJ ain't that's, lose on that right. stage. That's, that's, that's true. All right. Well, we'll, we'll save the uh, weeks to come to talk about dynasties. In the meantime, we are going to toss it over to the losing quarterback of Super Bowl 50. Why you had to say it like that, Chris? Well, because it's um, there has to be a loser in the game. But you had to say it like that. Okay. This man mama watching. No, I'm not saying he's a loser. I said he was the losing quarterback. Jared Goff. <laughs> Kills. Kills and it, it hurts. It hurts me so much just knowing how well our defense played and and against that that team against Tom to play that well defensively and um, us not hold up our end of the bargain and, and, and it's um, no it's, it's you know our job to score points and we didn't do that tonight. Well, the, the toughest loss I've ever had. I mean, it's uh, it, it kills. It's it's terrible and. Um, you know, there are some, some, some good things you can take from it, but right now there's there's nothing. I mean, it's a game I wish I would have played better. I wish we would have played better on offense, offensively as a whole. Um, you know, I wish I could have had a million plays back, but uh, there's nothing you can do about it. You just got to learn and move forward. He's he not going to get me to pout and, and feel sorry for myself. Uh, I realize what this game means. I cherish the crap out of it, and I don't give a crap if you have a Hall of Fame bust, if you are you know been a Pro Bowler or win 20 Super Bowls. At the end of the day, you're all going to die, and you're all going to have the opportunity to be, play football or not be playing football. And who you are, how you carry yourself, whether you pout and, and feel sorry for yourself is the only thing that's going to matter because that's what people are going to remember about you. Um, you know what? And, and so for me, what means the most is that guys see me hold my head high. Uh, they see me confident in them and loving them and, and uh, there for them in any way I can moving forward. And you're a class act all the way through and through right there. Some nice perspective for them. When you look at the numbers, Jared Goff, self-admission, it hey, didn't have a good night. And there was a lot of plays that he said he would like back. You see the comparisons from the year that he had. Uh, to tonight. So when you looked and we sat and watched this game together, you guys, and we, we just kept waiting 
for this high-powered, prolific offense. Well, T and I were watching no, it together. We'll you it. were watching it up in a sweep. When LT and I were watching the game together, yeah. we were waiting for the offense to get going, and it just never quite got going. Why? Well, uh, earlier this week, we was asked a question about the rounds. What did, what did it take for them to win this game? And we talked about them getting 200 yards rushing, and we talked about the big plays. They led the league in big plays. Well, the Patriots eliminated that tonight. They couldn't rush the football, and they couldn't create the big plays. And I really think it was because, for one, that defensive line controlled the line of scrimmage. They really got Jared Goff off his spot, but also, on the back end, Prime, they mixed up the coverage. You yeah. hear Stephon Gilmore talk about that and I thought that was the difference I mean with Todd Gurley Todd Gurley only had 35 yards do we is this an injury situation no no we we gotta quit blaming this stuff on Todd Gurley I'm not blaming no, no, I know you're, you're not blaming on Todd Gurley you're not but what I hear this I, I hear that sentiment echo man the line ain't blocking nobody I mean, Gurley will make you miss. Gurley hit it. When he had it, he hit it. When it wasn't there, it just wasn't there. So that's not on him. I've said all week, this kid, golf is going to be special. But he's not ready for this stage right now. He's not ready for Bill Belichick. And let me tell you something, man. That whole offense, coaches included, they weren't ready for this. Did you see the bewildered look? When they panned to the sideline, they were out coached. Okay, so they didn't have a lot no, of blank looks. They didn't have no oh. answers for the stuff that the Patriots were doing. So, are you willing to say Sean McVay wasn't ready for this? None of them was ready for this. None of them was ready for I, this. I still believe that. It's it just hard for me to believe that you got the best running back in football. And he's on the sideline a lot of the game. Like, that's puzzling to me. I guarantee you, in, in weeks to come, there's, it's going to come out that something was wrong with Todd Gurley. That's exactly that knee I'm wasn't saying. right. So when he hit it, was it right when he hit it? When he yeah, got a 15-yard burst? Uh, it, 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 it wasn't the same. He ain't no LTs. But it huh? wasn't the same. He, we've advocated for Todd, and rightfully so, Todd Gurley, the best back that we saw in this game all year long, in, in this in this league all year long. And then it's the Super Bowl, and he's on the sideline. Give me one thing that allowed you to believe that golf was ready for this moment that he did in the game. Not a thing. Nothing. You guys kept waiting for it to happen. I knew it wasn't going to happen. You're looking over there playing against Todd. He had a dismal second half of the season. He had a dismal first half of the uh, NFC what, Championship we, game. And you wanted him to come out no. here and hit well, the switch? And, and no, and the only and way was it ain't no switch. Gonna, no, he said he was going to be able to do that if he ran the football. Well, But didn't, they didn't run the but football. But I also no. thought the Patriots did something to Jared Goff that not many people do. Did you see that they didn't really get in defensive formation until late in the play clock? So they didn't let Jared and Sean McVay look it and see what the they play, were lining yeah. up in and then change the play play. Jared Goff had to do that from the line of scrimmage with less than 15 seconds on the play clock. Carissa, he's not built to win the game right now against a defense like that with his arm. He's not built That's for that what, right now. But I don't think anyone would say that he had to win it on his arm. I think because we've watched these games all year long. And okay, if, if the, you the running game was done. Anderson, yeah, but, but talk okay, early. forget that. That was over. So they established they, that earlier. And the this game is was not going to be no running game. Right. Didn't they establish that? Yeah. Stats. I, I, I hate reading stats. But stats said it ain't going to be no running game. You're going to have to throw this thing. Right. Yeah. They may have took, take, what, three shots or two shots deep vertically. This, you can't do that against the Patriots. You got to try to air them out. You got to try to bust the seams. Then you got the best darn safety out of the game, their quarterback, and you still, you still can't muster up nothing. I, I agree moment. with you on the fact that even when um, Brandon Cooks was wide open in the end zone. Jared Goff just was too late throwing it to him. He was open. Mm -hmm. If he released that ball a little bit earlier, then that's a touchdown. But it, it speaks to prime. He was just a little bit confused and didn't understand exactly what, what he was looking at out there. Yeah. Let's send it over to Melissa Stark who's standing by. How do you guys just keep doing this? It's just a testament to those guys. I'm just proud to be a part of this organization. We come in. It's not easy. It's tough. You have days to wonder why you do it. But you do it for moments like this. You know, it was on the line there. Took a four-minute drive from our own four-yard line. I'm just so damn proud of these guys. That's just amazing. Yeah, it's tied at three all going into the fourth quarter. What are you guys thinking on the sideline and also when just you're keep on the battling? You just got to keep battling, keep fighting, keep moving forward. Our defense played lights out. They kept us in this game, and when we got our shot, we took it.
Meanwhile, Tom Brady telling everyone, you know, everyone thinks we suck. We're still here. Did this team play with a chip on his shoulder? We're still here, aren't we? We're the last one standing. I think so. Congratulations. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, you know they're celebrating in that locker room. <laughs> wow. Oh, they got the boom box. Love it. I mean, that thing is They got a box box. That's all this thing right there. That is more than a boom box. You knew that it was going to be a Radio Raheem. Robert Kraft uh, <laughs> was very optimistic, so much that he was celebrating yesterday with Cardi B. So you heard Gronk up here say that Kraft, that Belichick's even going to celebrate tonight. So. Oh, no, no. I've talked to several rappers. Two chains say he's rapping tonight at the party. Oh. Snoop say he's rapping. You know, the boss, Rick Rose, say he, that part, what am I doing here? I was going to say, Darren, you've got hookups. <laughs> what gotta, am I doing here? You can't, you don't want to watch the game with us, but you got to get us into the party. Uh, look at Boston right now. Wow. Wow. This is a town of, look, the Red Sox win the world championship. They know the about Patriots, championships. Right? Woo. They do. We know how to party in Atlanta, though. Oh. Oh, how about Gronk going? Is this, are we alive? Kidding. Yes, we're still alive. I'm going to keep those guys employed here. But yes, celebration continues in Boston, and I'm sure it will be that crowded and that much fun for many more days to come. So speaking of Boston, we uh, touched on it earlier. The Celtics have won title since 2001. They beat the Lakers back in 2008. The Bruins have hoisted the cup once. That was eight years ago. And the Red Sox, as I had just mentioned, broke that curse back in 2004 and have won three titles since. And if you need Tom Brady next, he'll be partaking in his sixth championship parade since 2001. Not bad. Dion, uh -huh. we got to talk about this secondary yeah. for the Patriots. What did they do well tonight? <laughs> they covered. They loved to play man. They didn't see a threat that can really beat them except for one guy vertically. They didn't give up the big play. They played solid, fundamental football, not relinquishing the big play. Mm -hmm. And I love it. They made the tackles. They, when they went in two man, I mean, they stayed inside. These guys was textbook. They were textbooks, textbook tonight. But you, you know what helped them? Man, they got some heat up front, boy. Yeah. You were they talking got some, to Willie boy, about that. They got that. some heat up front. Yeah. Right? Our own Willie McGinnis. You were talking to him about coverages. Right. And and then playing a lot of zone and man and switching. and a lot. What do they do? In, like? in, in certain situations, you know, the Rams like to run all these crossing routes. And, and that's tough against man-to-man -to -man because you get the rub routes. You get the pick routes. But the Patriots knew that. They knew when they got in certain formations that they were going to run these little pick routes and these little crossing routes. So what did they do, Brian? They got in zone. Yeah. And they sit there and they just wait on them. And Jared Goff had to hold the football. He didn't know where to go with them. It caused confusion. And obviously, with the big boys up front, it allowed them to get to, to Jared Goff and knock him off his spot. The Rams averaged 32.9 points per game, and we didn't even see them score a touchdown. That's ridiculous. In wow. the Super Bowl. So, Jack, their so longest... you're trying to tell me they weren't outcoached? I mean, Why, what, 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 whoever what, said that? I didn't say that. I'm I didn't just, say that. I'm, I'm just putting it on you, though. <laughs> <laughs> you best looking one up here. <laughs> When, when when you have a team that scores 32 points and they put out a performance like that, you got to start searching yourself and say, okay, now what happened? What happened? Okay, either you were out coach, you won prepared, or you fainted, or you just melted in the moment. Pick one. One of them got to stick. You got to put on the one of them. You got to put on a suit for one of them. And it, I really feel like it was all of above. Mm -hmm. I knew the quarterback wasn't going to be red. I like him. I love him. Don't get this misconstrued. This kid is going to be a stud. He already is nice. He ain't like Tom, ain't Tom Brady nice. He, you know, like second. No, look, look Jared Goff is, about, is. He's about the third tier. He one, the of third the, tier. one of the 32 quarterbacks in the National Football League. You don't just end up here without the talent to do so. Right. You don't end up in the Super Bowl in your yeah. third year. He's had an unbelievable year and wasn't able, by his own admission, to put it all together tonight. Their longest play of the night was 24 yards. So, LT, from your offense of lens, even with the black shield. What did uh, you see? I like that. Well, we got to give credit to the Patriots. This was a masterful performance by them. And and, and really, I, I'll, I'll say this. Since I've been living, this is the best Super Bowl performance from a defense that I've seen. Second best offense, scoring offense in football. It's the lowest they scoring them. Super Bowl ever. A absolutely. But they held them without a touchdown. This team has scored touchdowns, you know, like no one else this season. Mm -hmm. To score three points? Yeah. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And 
uh, unfortunately, the, the Patriots have a lot of reason to celebrate, but uh, they lost one of theirs tonight. Patrick Chung went out with an injury. He was able to return to the sideline and cheer his team on, and we hear from him now. First off, man, Patrick, just appreciate you. You go down in a huge game like this, and your brothers really rally around you. What was that like to sit up and watch? It's amazing, bro. I mean, this is my family. I tell them all the time. You know, we play like a family. We're going to lose like a family. We're going to win like a family. And today we did. You know, and they told me I got you. And I knew it. I felt it. So I had no doubts, man. One of the most emotional scenes, you're on the ground. They bring up a cart to take you out. They put you in the air cast. And you said, I am walking off of this field. Yeah. What about that decision? Can't go on the cart, bro. Tougher than that, bro. You know, I saw I've been brought up, my family, you know, keep pushing. My dad right here always tell me, keep pushing. You know, so I knew my teammates had me. I was frustrated. I didn't want the cart, you know, but I'm also not going to stay inside. My brothers are playing. I got to support them. You have been through this before. To see this this team rally, a lot of people doubted you at different points of this year. To rally like yeah, this, to end up here did. once again, uh -huh. how does that feel? Feels great. Feels great. And I don't know if you did or anybody else, but the ones that doubted, take a seat, baby. Comes three Super Bowls with the Patriots, and this guy and that coach and that owner now have six. Unbelievable what they've been able to do. These fans are on fire right here, and rightfully so. We saw, you know, some good things and we saw some bad things, but when it's all said and done, as Gronk pointed out, it doesn't matter how it all works out. It's who won the game, and that's the New England Patriots. Unfortunately for the L.A. Rams and their fan base, they lost, and C.J. Anderson is standing by. I was going to tell you beginning of this week that the Patriots are going to score 13 points. Would you have thinking you would have won this game? For sure. With 13. Yeah. What did Bill Belichick and that defense do? Anything to surprise you guys? What What was the reason you guys put three on the board? Um, just the way the game got. I don't think they did anything different. Um, you know, I bet you if you go back and look at both teams, even before I got here, um, third downs and red zone efficiency was, I bet you they were, you know, top five in both categories on both sides of the football. And uh, today we wasn't great on third down, couldn't sustain drives, um, put us in the hole, put us behind the sticks, and that's tough. What has this been like you for you, this short ride and everything? And doesn't end the way you want it to do, but could you sum it up? It sucks. It, it, you know, it wasn't about me, you know. You know, you got Whitworth and 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 Saffold and 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 Sully and and Coach Pete and, and some other coaches who've been doing this for a very long time. And um, you know, this is my second time losing the Super Bowl, but I know what that winning feeling feels like. And you know, I don't know what they're gonna do next. Um, even with some coaches who've been coaching for a very long time, but um, you know, you know, it's tough to get back here. So. It was about them tonight. You know, I'm not I'm not really worried about how my journey went and things like that. I, I guess I'll reflect on that later, but um, it just sucked to come up short for certain teammates that you wanted to see, you know, embrace that, you know, celebration and, and, and winning an accomplishment after all the success they've had in their career. Last one for you. Did you know the carries between you and Todd would be divvy up the way they were heading into this game during the week of preparation? Nah, we just, you know, Todd was going to go as much as he can and then, um, you know, as the game went on, I guess, we, you know, it, to me it felt like we just tried to find whoever can get in the rhythm. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't care who got in the rhythm. But um, obviously, you know, New England did a good job slowing me and Todd down. And, um, you know, there's some things that we can learn from. And all you can do is watch the tape and take it in the next year and, and go from there. Because when we look at this Rams team, their average age is 26 and a half, a young team, a lot of talent. We know that that head coach and Sean McVay and, and his genius um, we will be seeing for many years in the NFL. What's next for them? Will they, can they make it back here next year? I think they can. Uh, obviously, they have the talent. I'll say they have the core, the nucleus um, to get back here. Obviously, the quarterback, you know, they got Brandon Cooks wrapped up, you know, uh, Robert Woods and, and obviously Ty Gurley and Domkin Sue. You, you don't know if he comes back. I don't know if he's on a, a, a one-year deal, two-year deal. I'm not sure. But you know you can't, you know you can't keep everybody. He's on a one-year deal. You know you can't keep everybody. So who do they choose to bring back? And who are the pieces that they feel like they need to bring back? Let's say you could pick a piece. What do they need? They need to keep that heat up front. You, you have the risk of losing Peters as well. 
I know he's still on upon his rookie deal, and he's looking to be paid as well in that yep. secondary. You got to keep those guys stable. What, what about receiver? I mean, yeah, the loss of Cooper there, Cup. The, the loss of Cooper Cup killed this team. And right? that's what I'm saying. He is like the guy. He is the glue guy. that keeps it all together. He's the guy that keeps the chains moving. But you got to understand, winning depletes you. When you win. Look for your locker room to be depleted because everybody think your guy is better than they really are, and they're going to grab it. think that happen in this locker room? I mean, you do listen to how Andrew speaks and how CJ speaks, and I know CJ's new to this locker room. You can't but stop it. No? You yeah, it happens in money. every locker room. Money coming for some of these guys from the outside in, and they're going to grab it and run. Yep. Well, for their sake, I hope they keep it together because, you know, I'm pro-team.